Johnny Dollar. Well, at long last. What? I say it's high time. It is, huh? Well, isn't it? I don't know. High time for what? High time he answered that phone. And listen. Well? This is Jimmy Bartell. Oh, Jimmy. You know, over here at Mono Guarantee Insurance. Of course I know. How are you? Well, what happened to you, Johnny? Where have you been? I've been trying to reach you for about four weeks now. Didn't you try my call service? Yeah, I tried you. Huh? Oh, no, I uh, I guess I kind of forgot about that. Oh, well, if you had, you'd have found out that last week I was at Grand Canyon, the week before in Corpus Christi, the week before that in Knoxville, Tennessee, and before that, up in Boston. Yeah, sure, gallivanting around the country while I've been sitting here up to my neck in trouble, beating my brains out, working my head off. <laughs> Sounds to me like you need a plastic surgeon. What? What's the problem, Jimmy? The Burma Red, Johnny. The what? You heard me, the Burma Red. Jimmy, uh, are you sure you want me and not the State Department? Yeah, I'm sure. All right, I'll bite. Who is the Burma Red? Not who, but what. Well? And listen, we carry the insurance. Half a million dollars worth. You hear that, fella? Half a million. I am deeply impressed. And, baby, if you can't get it back for us, that's exactly what we're going to have to hand over. In cold, hard cash. 500 Gs. Well, maybe I had better get to work on it. Good. And I don't mean to tell you what your commission will be if you do recover it. What else do you think I'm thinking of? Then the job is yours, Johnny. And, brother, I sure hope that you can find it and get it back. The Burma Red. Right. Uh, just one thing, Jimmy, if you don't mind. Sure, Johnny. Before I start gallivanting around the country, as you put it, looking for this thing... Yeah? Don't you think that it might be nice if I have some slight idea, some inkling of what it is, this Burma Red? I told you. I told you I... Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, come on over here and I'll... I'll tell you all I know about it. Okay. We interrupt this program to bring you a special message to the parents of schoolboy patrol members who were taking the Washington trip. The buses with the patrol will arrive at Durham Union Bus Station this evening about 7.15 to 7.30. We repeat, the Durham Schoolboy Patrol Washington buses will arrive at the Union Bus Station this evening at 7.15 to 7.30. Parents are asked to be present to pick up their children. The, uh... Or the parents, brother, are also asked to use the Sears parking lot. 7.15 to 7.30 the time. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Mono Guarantee Insurance Company, Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Burma Red matter. Expense account item one. $1.20 for a cab from my apartment to Jimmy Bartell's office in the Spear Building, down on the square. Jimmy's specialty, incidentally, is property insurance, especially where fine artwork is concerned. And in this case... Yeah, Johnny, four solid weeks I buzzed that phone of yours and what I thought of you for not being there to answer it wouldn't be fit to print. <laughs> All right, I'm here now, so stop bellyache. But maybe you're too late, fella. He's already gotten out of country with it. The Burma Red. That's right, the Burma Red. Which is what? I told you, Johnny, it's... it's it. Oh, yeah, that's right. I didn't. Now, listen. I'm listening. It was brought over here a couple of years ago as part of a collection by some countess or other. Got written up in all the picture magazines. Do I hear a slight echo? Echo? Yes, from the case I had on my hands last week. Well, I don't know, because I don't know what you had a case of. But listen. Go on. Having been a part originally of the Buckingham Collection over there in England, you know, well, as you might expect, it was picked up here by Winkler and Winkler. The big jewelry outfit down in New York. The same. Oh, then I do hear an echo. So it's a piece of jewelry and it's been stolen from them. No. The same as the Otara's necklace I recovered last week. No, again. For Northeast indemnity. No? No, Johnny. It's just a single unmounted stone, a ruby. But so help me, it's big enough to choke a horse. And now it's gone. When did you say it was stolen from them? I didn't, because it wasn't. They'd sold it to that wealthy old Mrs. Harvey Larriman Brittingham. Lives off in the edge of town. Oh, I see. But four weeks ago, somebody neatly chiseled open her wall safe and walked off with it. Chiseled? Okay, blew it. What's the difference? Plenty. Knowing a safecracker's method can help a lot in pinning him down. No, the police think they know who did it, all right. Well, what do you need me for? To get that stone back. But if they already know who did but it... But they couldn't prove it. Sure, the modus operandi, the way the safe was blown, it pointed straight to him and nobody else. But also, he was known to be here in town. Who? But they couldn't pin it on him. He had himself a perfect alibi. Who, Jimmy? So maybe it was rigged. They couldn't break it. Jimmy... But, Johnny, it had to be Oscar Mayfield. Mayfield? They held him as long as they could. Went through everything he owns. Checked out every contact he made while he was here in Hartford. And all that got him was nothing. And not very much of that. I'll say this. 
If Oscar Mayfield, the old master, made that heist... So what could they do but let him traipse merrily on back to New York where he's been living lately? Look, Jimmy... But I figure, despite the police report and all the work they did, I figure that somehow Mayfield got away with that ruby. Jimmy, I'm inclined to think you may be right. I know Oscar Mayfield. He's clever. I've tangled with him before. And, uh, come to think of it, he made a promise to me once. Mayfield made a promise? Mm-hmm. What was it, Johnny? That if I ever tried to interfere with him again... Yeah, well, he'd see to it that I had a very nice funeral. To look neat in the heat, look for Daycron on the label, cause Daycron is a man's best friend. Right then, Daycron is your best friend when it comes to staying wrinkle-free and neat all summer. Look for Daycron in lightweight suits, handsome slacks, good-looking sport coats, too. You'll stay well-pressed and well-dressed thanks to Daycron by DuPont. There's just no denying in the clothes he'll be buying. Daycron is a man's best friend. Expense account item two. 65 cents for a cab to police headquarters where, uh, after some inquiries, I ended up talking with Sergeant Holly Holcomb. He wasn't very encouraging. Sure, Dollar. He was known to be in town. Known to have tried to leave right afterward. The trademark he left on the wall safe was his. Plain as a nose in your face. Mm-hmm. And we pride ourselves on knowing the M.O.s of all the safe men within a thousand miles. Yes, I know you do. And rightly so. But he couldn't pin a thing on him. All the direct evidence we didn't have on him because of his alibi apparently checking out all the way. You know, we simply couldn't hold him on nothing more than suspicion any longer. Yeah. Especially with that smart mouthpiece he dragged in. If he tried, he would have sued us from here to kingdom come. I mean, if you know Oscar Mayfield. Only too well, Sergeant. And you know what I mean. I suspect him just as much as you do. But until we have something definite, some real tangible clue... Well, anyhow, he went back to New York. Have you notified the police down there? Sure, sure I am. Lieutenant Singer at the 18th Precinct. And uh, isn't he an old friend of yours? Randy Singer? He certainly is. Well, I haven't heard a word from him, not in over a week now, so why don't you call him? Or better still, go down there and see him. See what goes. All right, Sergeant. Maybe I'll do that. There was some more talk between us, and Sergeant Holcomb gave me every detail of the job. Told me what they'd found and what they'd done about it. And yes, all the completely unconfirmed evidence pointed straight to Oscar Mayfield. Unconfirmed and unconfirmable evidence because of the man's unshakable alibi. Item three, 85 cents for a phone call to Lieutenant Randy Singer, 18th Precinct, New York Police Department. You mean to say you just now found out about that ice? That's right, Randy, I just found out. You see, Johnny, if you didn't spend so much time gallivanting all over the place, you might be of some use around here. You, uh, you didn't get a promotion for all the gallivanting I did for you last week. Oh, darn it, I guess I should have worked that case myself. <laughs> well, how about this Mayfield? You've kept an eye on him? I've done everything but tap his phone line. And? Nothing, Johnny, absolutely nothing. You just didn't get on this one soon enough. I know what you mean. Unless he's changed these last couple of years... Oscar Mayfield is not one to hold on very long to whatever he's lifted. Right. And if he did snatch that stone, you can be sure he passed it on and collected for it long before this. And yet there's always the chance. So, in the case of a big hunk of rock like that, it means one of two things. The guy who bought it from him is either carting it out of the country and far away, or having it cut up into little ones that nobody will ever be able to identify. I guess Mayfield would have passed it along in one big fat hurry. I know we couldn't find it. Anywhere around or around him, we tried every trick. And I mean trick, Johnny. Until he started to yell at the D.A. and the D.A. started yelling at us. Uh, Johnny, I understand. Uh, I've just heard this, mind you. Yeah? Well, I understand that one of my boys... Oh, well, he was off duty, of course. So it was completely unofficial, you understand? Yeah. Well, I heard he even went so far as to roll Mayfield one night in the alley back of a nightclub. What? Not a sign of that, Ruby. Randy, if the department ever catches up with these unofficial tricks... Look, I told you, Johnny, I only heard that. 
But I know myself it isn't hidden anywhere in his apartment. Oh, you do? I do. Randy, didn't you and your clever little boys completely overlook the Otara's necklace that was hidden in the back of a camera just about a week ago? Oh, now that was different. So that I had to get lucky and find it for you? Okay, okay. So you happen to guess right. For once. <laughs> so maybe I better get on down your way and look around for myself. Tell me, where does Mayfield live? A hotel apartment over at 614 East 49th. But it's no use, Johnny. Why? Just because he's always gotten rid of things quickly in the past? No. Nope. Or because you knuckleheads couldn't find the ruby? No, you Johnny. You haven't been able to hold him on suspicion and make a real investigation? I mean because by the time you can get here, he won't be. All right, then I'll grab the first plane I can and... What was that? Your pal Mayfield has paid up his rent and he's moving out. He's got himself a reservation on a plane to Mexico City this afternoon. Uh-oh. By the time you get to his place, he'll be gone. Randy. Yeah? Can't a genius like you come up with some excuse to hold him there for me? Oh, flattery will get you nowhere, Johnny. The answer's no. I've run out of tricks. Anything else I might try would only get me into hot water. No, wait, Randy. Yeah? Maybe I know a little trick to hold him over. Well, don't expect any official help from me or the department if you do come down it. What kind of a trick, Johnny? What's the difference? Now, look, if you're thinking of doing something else... Oh, think, Randy, how are you That would talking? only get us in order to clamp down on you. Don't worry about it. I'll be in touch. Illegal? I don't know why, but I'd suddenly remember that during my run-in with Mayfield a couple of years ago, there'd been talk about a man who was fencing his stuff. A man who had been only vaguely identified as Hugo. The last name had never come to light. Okay, maybe that name still meant something to him. If so, it justified item four. A dollar twenty-six for a telegram to Mayfield. It read as follows. Urgent that before you make any deal, you call me immediately at Plaza 3, 9970. And I signed it, Hugo. And I had them put a rush on it, hoping it would give me some much needed time. Item five, six dollars for a cab to Bradley Field. Item six, ten dollars and twelve cents for a plane to New York. And when I got there, item seven is five eighty for a taxi to 614 East 49th Street. It was a smart, good-looking apartment hotel, which is uh, more than I can say for the stuffy uniform doorman. Mr. Mayfield, did you say? Uh, that's right. Mr. Oscar Mayfield. I is he still here? Is he in? Uh, whom shall I say is calling, sir? Don't. Uh, don't? Just give me his apartment number. Your name, please. Now, don't worry about it. I'm sorry, but I must have your name, sir. It's Dollar. Now, what's the apartment number? Dollar. Hmm. Very well. No, 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 you don't. Just put the phone down. Hmm? I beg your pardon. It's granted. Now, the number of his apartment. Not unless I announce you, sir. Now, look, I, uh, I am a special investigator. Oh, you are? Yes, and if you'd like to call the police and check on me, only I haven't time. Look. Look here, these are my credentials. And I tell you, sir, that unless I... Oh. Oh, I see. Uh, Mr. Johnny Dollar. That's right. The insurance investigator. Yes. I didn't know. Well, you do now. Well, nonetheless, Mr. Dollar... Just I give me Mayfield's apartment number, please. Now, what is it? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's uh, 7G. Okay, thank you. And I'll phone that you're on your way up, sir. You do, and I'll break your neck. Seven G. Hmm? Just in case he remembers what he once promised, I better make sure that this thing is working properly. Uh -huh. uh, here we are. Now, let's see. Oh yes, seven A. Seven. Oh there. 7E, 7F, and 7G. Well, Mr. Mayfield, I hope you are still here. Mr. Mayfield? Mayfield? Oh, got it, if he's already flown the coop. wide open. Mr. Mayfield? Hmm. The 
well-furnished living room was empty. And so was a kind of study off at one side and a little bar kitchenette beyond it. As for the bedroom in the back, well, as I started through the door, I caught sight of a couple of handbags in front of a chest of drawers. So he was still here. What I didn't catch sight of, though, was the gun shoved around the side of the door into my back. Just lift them up slowly, Dollar. Slowly, while I see whether you're armed. Ah. Yes, here it is. Thank you. Okay, Mayfield. Now over there, next to the bed. Go on. Sure. Sure, why not? Are you happy now? Dollar, I made you a promise once. It's kind of foolish of you, wasn't it? I'm going to keep that promise now. You're going to pull off a shot in a place like this? This apartment is absolutely soundproof. One of the reasons I selected it. I see. Well, are you ready? Have you tried the mild, kind taste of Kent? You should, because... You feel better about smoking with the taste of Kent. Kent with the micronite filter. Refines away harsh flavor. Refines away hot taste. It makes the taste of a cigarette mild as a balmy day in the month of May. Kent is the best for the flavor you like. Kent is the best. Yes, Kent is the best for a mild, kind taste. Smoke a carton of Kent without switching. Discover the kind taste of Kent's blend of the world's finest quality tobaccos. Then try your old brand. What a difference in taste. Kent with the Micronite. Kent with the Micronite. Kent with the Micronite filter. Refines away harsh flavors. Refines away hot taste. You'll enjoy the mild, kind taste of Kent with the Micronite filter. And it looks like you were expecting me, Mayfield. Oh, yes, Dollar, I was. You see, I figured right from the beginning that you might be called in on this case. Then you do have the Burma Red, the ruby. Now? <laughs> oh, of course not. You should know that I wouldn't hold on to a thing like that. Let's say it's been... Uh, successfully disposed of. And why do you hang around here? Because I'm waiting for... Yes? I was waiting for you. Mm. To settle my old score with you. When I received that silly telegram, I was certain that you would be here. No? You mean I pulled a boo-boo? Your old pal Hugo is dead? I mean that ridiculous number you gave me to call. It's too bad. I thought it was a pretty good idea to keep you trying it until I could get here. Oh, I'll confess it did make me change my reservation to a later plane. But after all, when I got nothing but a busy signal eight times in a row, I uh, naturally called the operator. And she told you? Yes, that it's a number used for testing, that a busy signal is all it ever gets. Hmm. <laughs> Obviously a trick, then, worthy of you. So I waited for you. And when the doorman, following my explicit instructions, called me, told me you'd arrived, I... Oh, but I'm wasting time. What's more, I'm expecting someone else. So, Dollar, this is it. Expecting me, Mayfield? What? Well, Randy. Just drop it right there, Mayfield. Huh? Gently, now. All right, now Dollar's again. Now sit over there in that chair next to the window. All right, anything you say, Lieutenant. Oh, Randy, you're like the U.S. Marines. Here, you, uh, you better keep this gun of his. You know, I'm just glad you got careless and left that front door open out there. I thought I heard a door close just before you made your dramatic entrance. But how come, Randy? What do you mean, how come? Well, from what you said on the phone... So what? I'm off duty. Any reason I shouldn't just uh, kind of drop around for a visit? Oh, I'm glad you did. You know something, Johnny? When? So am I. And I'll probably hate myself in the morning for saying this, <laughs> but... You know, I've waited a long time for a chance to return some of the favors you've done me over the years. That I've done you? Well, Mayfield? I'm afraid your so-called visit is completely pointless, Lieutenant. You must know very well that you won't find the ruby around here or anything to even remotely connect me with it. Do I need to after the little party I walked in on? Yeah, that's right. Huh? You can stop smiling now. Oh, very well, very well. If you insist on booking me for an alleged attack on Johnny Dollar with a, quote, deadly weapon, unquote... Let us go down to your station house and have fun with it. This Grand Central Station? Shall we? Shall we go, Lieutenant? You just stay in that chair, Mayfield, while I... No, Randy. 
while I answer the door. Okay, but leave this one open so I can hear. Right. Yes? Yeesh, what a fancy layout this is. Who are you? Uh, you Oscar Mayfield. Well, who did you expect to find here? Santa Claus? Yeah, well, no, no, no. Look, look Mr. Mayfield, you, you mind putting down a gun, huh? Not till I'm sure you're okay. Come inside. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. All right, now, what's your name? Yeah, uh, Rosie, uh, Rosie Gilliam. Look, you can frisk me. I'm clean. And that package? Well, you know, it's from the boss. It's from Hugo. It's what you've been waiting for. Oh, it's from Hugo, huh? Yeah, yeah, sure, honestly. He said I should deliver it and get a receipt, then maybe you'd hand me a fin or a tenner. Oh, he did, huh? Yeah. Maybe I better make sure that it's, um, whatever he was supposed to send over to me. Well, do you think I'd meddle with it and maybe do myself out of these delivery jobs he gives me and pays me so good? You're on the level? Yeah, you're yeah, honest. You hit it. Now, this contains what I think it does. By the way, uh, where does Hugo hang out? Well, how should I know? All I know is he calls me now and then, meets me at some place, and gives me something I should deliver. I guess you're okay, then. Sit down there while I take a look at this. Yeah, sure, sure. We'll just see now. You know you're the first gent who ever opened one of those deliveries in front of me? Am I? Yeah, you're the very first... Holy jumping! Look at that loot! Where is he waiting to pick up the receipt, Rosie? Yeah, I don't know. He only hunts me up when he's ready. Look at all that dough. What kind of a receipt, Rosie? He said you'd know what kind. Oh, man, would you look at that? Would you look at it? All right, I'll write you one. Yeah, yeah maybe uh, <clears throat> maybe I could have a 20 for bringer. I'll give you a receipt to Mr. Hugo. Um, let's see, how is it now that he spells his last name? You don't know, Mr. Mayfield? Well, don't you know? I should know how to spell Hempischlag. Hempischlag. So that's it. And now, wait a minute. Listen, you, you are Mayfield, ain't you? All right, Randy. Randy? Randy who? Lieutenant Singer of the police. Come in, Randy. The police? Oh, no, I've been talked. Mr. Hugo will kill me. No, Rosie, I don't think he'll ever get the chance. I just take it easy, Rosie. Oh, no, 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 listen, cop, I was... We'll give you all the protection you need after we sign you in at headquarters. Rosie, whatever your name is, you hairbrained idiot. Just take it easy, Mayfield, and sit down. You too, Rosie. Well, now, look at all this beautiful money. Randy, unless I'm awfully wrong, it's payment to Mayfield for the ruby. And if you can locate a Hugo with the unlikely name of Hemperschlag, or maybe you'll save us the trouble, Mayfield. After all, now that we have his name, and who knows, if you talk, maybe the judge won't throw the whole book at you. Well? <sighs> okay, Dollar. I know when I'm licked, I'll talk. Mr. Hugo Hemperschlag, believe it or not, turned out to be a gem setter for the famous jewelry house of Winkler & Winkler, where he couldn't help knowing about all the important stuff brought into this country, and with the know-how to break it up after he'd arranged to have it stolen. Expense account total, well, in view of the commission I'll get on this one, forget it. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, I'll be back with a rather unusual story. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr., music supervision by Ethel Huber, sound patterns by Joseph Cabibo. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were... Paul McGrath as Oscar Mayfield, Al Hodge as Lieutenant Randy Singer, Ivor Francis as Jimmy Bartell, Jack Grimes as Rosie, Santos Ortega as the sergeant, Mercer McLeod as the doorman. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roger Foster speaking. Derwood Kirby's favorite program, The Gary Moore Show, weekdays on the CBS radio network. CBS for Durham, Raleigh, WDNC.